Well hello guys, so this is a week review after the Apple event. So last Friday, the 22nd of September, the iPhone 8 launched. So as you can see, I've got a little lineup of products that I purchased on launch day. Um, I've already done an unboxing of this, but I thought I'd give you a collective unboxing. Now I know I'm not going to be the first person to unbox all these products live. And that's fine, I don't mean to be. I just want to give you my impression um, as somebody who is switched from an iPhone 7, so the regular size 4.7 inch phone, to the larger uh, iPhone 8 Plus, which obviously rocks a 5.5 inch display. Now, that's quite a leap, um, but I want to go through my experience for anybody who's probably looking to do that uh, and give you my honest review uh, as an Apple fan. But just as a technology enthusiast, to be honest, um, they're, they're cracking products anyway, uh, and we'll go through this. So, going to be as honest as possible. Now, the audio, uh, hopefully, uh, is being recorded via my uh, AirPods. So, I am currently wearing my AirPods, and hopefully the uh, microphone there is, all this audio is coming from the AirPods. So, any issues or any feedback? Please give me a shout. Now, I am recording this straight from the iPhone 8 Plus. So, there is no 8 Plus in this box. Um, I'm merely going to give you a look inside the box. As, as I say, there's plenty of unboxings online. Uh, but I probably will do a separate iPhone 8 Plus uh, unboxing for you. But it's pretty standard stuff. Pretty much the same as iPhone 7 and the 6S. But anyway, we're going to jump straight in and go through what products I bought and why I bought them. So... Obviously, I'm going to just put these aside for a second and we're going to go through the main one. So, iPhone 8 Plus. Now, I am going to now switch to the tele, uh, telephoto lens on the iPhone 8 Plus just by tapping the 1x and then zooming in. So, if we zoom to two, two uh, magnifications, that's still using the lens and not digital zoom, so that's great. So, as you can see, uh, I've got the iPhone 8 Plus in silver. Now, I am on the Apple Upgrade program, so therefore I get a new iPhone every year. I pay so much a month to Apple, and when the new one comes out, I simply reserve it on pre-orders day, walk into my you know, my chosen appointment slot, and walk out of the new one. So I did that. Uh, this was the first time this year where I didn't go at launch time, which is 8 o'clock on the day. Uh, I was working, unfortunately, so I picked it up later in the afternoon, about 1pm. Uh, walked in walked out now this year there wasn't a major there wasn't a major queue um, which people were expecting i wasn't expecting it too much just because i know the iphone 8 uh, iphone x or the 10 is around the corner and that's kind of the big eye opener this year these are in my eyes a 7s it's a revision it's kind of what we expect i knew there was going to be a big announcement for the you know the 8 um I knew they were coming. I do follow Mac rumors and that, so I kind of spoil it for myself, but I can't help it. So I knew those were coming, but I know the iPhone X is going to be the big one, which launches later on. Would I have ordered the iPhone X? Quite possibly. It would have all depends on when it was coming out. I couldn't be bothered to wait such a long time when I'm quite happy with the phone I had. So I went for the Plus, uh, bigger phone, more challenging if you're not used to it, but that's fine. So. This is the retail box. Obviously, we've got the nice Apple logo. Uh, back of the iPhone, it's glass. It kind of shows you that in this two-tone contrast there. iPhone, there is no FCC markings or anything like that now in the UK and most of the countries around the world. It used to be a requirement. It is no longer a requirement. Flipping it over, it's pretty much just going to tell us what we've got. So it tells us the size. Now, yes, I did go for the iPhone uh, 256 gigabyte version. I don't think I could have lasted too long on 64 GB. So I went for the bigger one. Obviously inside the box you've got your standard things such as you know headphones etc etc which I don't use because I have AirPods. And obviously at the bottom you've just got what you know your barcode, your serial number and the IMEI. And like I said it just tells you there what I've got. So mine is in silver. So let's have a look and unbox it. So no need for two hands, slide, and boom, we're in. So designed by Apple in California, pretty standard there. And in here, slightly different design, which is pretty cool. Various, obviously, warranty information. 
standard Apple stickers there, so it corresponds to the colour you've got. I have white, so I've got white Apple stickers. Welcome to iPhone, quick setup guide, but for you iPhone users, there's really no different. Uh, and the SIM card eject tool, which is pretty cool, so you need that to obviously pop your SIM in. In the box, you've got your 5 watt charger. Now, as you can see, mine is still wrapped because I won't be using it. Got many of these around the household, but I do will be using the in the wireless charging capability, which came to this year's lineup of iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, which I think is fantastic. I'm glad iPhone have finally done that jump. I know it has been around for quite a while, uh, but with Apple, sometimes they like to hold off and wait until the technology's matured, and then get in on the game. And obviously we've got our wired lightning air um, yeah, earphones. Now I won't be using these because I am using my AirPods. Um, and obviously we've got a lightning to 3.5 mil audio jack, which again, never had to use because uh, the only time I ever listen to music wirelessly is through my Apple TV, which is wireless, or at work, which is Bluetooth. And a lightning cable wrapped in there. Um, so most people's boxes may look like mine with all the accessories staying in there purely because this year's lineup includes wireless charging it uses the Qi standard which is quite universal that's what most wireless chargers are using um, and I picked up the Mophie one there was two devices they are recommending uh, which is the Mophie and the Belkin I preferred the feel of the Mophie so that's why I got it which brings us on to the Mophie now I have done a separate unboxing of that I'll leave the link here um, but there is the box itself. That was something else I picked up. Been using it for a week. At first, I thought mine had a fault because it was very, very, very slow to charge. Now, I wasn't expecting lightning speeds like I would from my fast charging brick with the USB-C to lightning cable, but I wasn't expecting the speed I was getting. Now, what I think was the problem um, was my phone was restoring quite a lot of data in the background, so therefore using quite a lot of resources. So just like if you plugged your phone into the wall with the supplied Apple brick, it would take a while to charge because it is using quite a lot of power. So most of that power from the plug is going to keep the charge you know, running at max. But since it's all restored and everything's dandy, it's a really nice experience. I literally pop it overnight, it's fully charged. It's pretty quick actually. It's, it's the same kind of speed you would expect from the charger. Now there is gonna be a firmware update later in the year which will increase to maximize the speed it can pull from this wireless device at the moment they have throttled it i think just to experiment to see it runs okay and then later in the year we'll get that update to unlock that feature so it'll be even quicker um, but the best of both worlds for me i also have this now the cable is over there but i don't really need to show you know what a cable looks like i also picked up a usb c to the lightning cable and that's because i already have a power brick with a lightning uh, with a usb c connector on it being an owner of a MacBook Pro 2017 edition, that utilizes the power brick with the uh, USB-C standard. So all I needed to do was pick up a cable. They're, they aren't cheap, but you know, it is Apple, you pay for the premium. Uh, we got this for 35 pound here in the UK. Um, and that enables me then to use the power brick. Um, and yeah, it's pretty decent. It's fast, it does charge very quick. Uh, I've only used it once, like if I, if I know I'm going out within like 10, 15 minutes and my battery's really low, pop it in, put it on aeroplane mode and I can gain quite considerable charge in very little time. So obviously the power brick for my Mac is 87 watts. Now the iPhone won't pull that much just because it can't support that much. However, you know, it will pull as quick much as it can and it does charge nice and quick. So guys... In a review, in a quick summary, what can I say a week on? Now, I am very, very pleased that I went for the iPhone 8 Plus. It's taken a bit of getting used to, yes, but I knew that would be the case. Do I like it? Yes, I'm very glad I switched. I wish I'd done it a long time ago. It takes a bit of getting used to in terms of your hand placement and things, so you can't reach everything. Obviously, with the new iPhone, you can have the keyboard on the right or the left now for quick typing with one hand. Um, for myself, I do type with one hand. I can't. I haven't quite mastered the two finger technique, but maybe in time with a bit of practice, I could do that. But for the most part, for the one handed typing, it's no problem for me. The only thing is, if I'm in the bath watching, you know, YouTube videos and stuff, the only button I do struggle to press is like the back button, which is the top left button. I do find myself having to use my other hand. But apart from that, guys, it's awesome. 
Uh, portrait mode is fantastic. Uh, I will include one photo, uh, which I took of many things this weekend, uh, and the effect is fantastic. For an iPhone, it's brilliant. Uh, obviously, that's exclusive to the bigger models, the 7 Plus and the 8 Plus, because it utilises both cameras. One to obviously take the photo, uh, and the other one to sense the depth of field, and then apply that blur effect, and it comes out brilliantly. Uh, so guys, any questions, please do get back to me and uh, let me know. Um, I will be getting the AirPad when that comes out, which is Apple's own wireless pad. Now, I have also got an order a Apple Watch Series 3 cellular edition. I've gone for the silver 42mm one. Uh, it's, I've gone with EE. I've ordered it directly with EE, so I'm going to be paying £25 a month for it. That's unlimited data with the watch. Um, unfortunately, it's not here yet. There has been a delay. I got a text today before launch saying there's been a delay between Apple and EE. Um, however, I've been tracking it every day just to have a look. Uh, and the expected delivery date is coming down. So hopefully I can bring you that unboxing and review when it comes. Um, but for me, that will be a godsend. Because uh, for somebody who works in retail, I have to leave my phone in the cash office locked away. Uh, if I get an important phone call and I'm not near the phone... I haven't got to worry about, you know, is my Bluetooth within range to pick up that phone call? Because I know from experience, because of how big the shop is, sometimes if I'm in the warehouse, for example, which I spend a lot of the time, my phone Bluetooth doesn't quite reach. So having that cellular connectivity has no problem. And I know I can get 4G within the building, no problem. So that for me is great. Having a little daughter as well. Any issues or anything, you know, to think about like that, I get it straight to my phone not having to rely on the iPhone to be the middleman there. So, great, really looking forward to that. And I'll bring you a review on that when it comes and hopefully all positivity. Uh, there is a little bit of negative press about the Apple Watch with the cellular connection. But, guys, I don't think it's really a big deal. It's just, you know, it, it obviously links to your own Wi-Fi settings on your iPhone. So if you've been connected to stuff like the cloud, for example, if you're near a cloud router, it will automatically try and ping to that. Uh, but obviously to connect to the cloud when you're on your iPhone, it would launch a web page for you then press connect. But obviously iWatch doesn't have that capability. So that's causing a bit of a bug. But Apple have acknowledged this problem and are working on that as a fix. That's I'm not really that concerned. I know when I'm in at work, there is no unknown Wi-Fi that they can connect to. So guys, that's my Apple bundle uh, for 2017. We look forward to obviously next year bringing you the next iPhone. But yeah... This has all been recorded on the iPhone 8 Plus, so please let me know how it's performed. Obviously, we're on 1X at the moment, so this has come from the normal camera. And obviously, as we zoom in, it then switches to the telephoto lens and then to digital zoom. So this is 4K at 60 frames per second. Thank you very much for watching.